been working on kind of a personal project today and I just want to take a moment and talk about this experience and cleaning out all of my makeup and just talk about consumerism and makeup as an identity. As you guys probably know, I have struggled with hoarding for a long time and it's not hoarding in the sense of you can't see my floor even though you can't right now, but it's in the sense of makeup for me was never a super creative outlet. It was something that because I had acne, I felt that I needed to do in order to feel beautiful. And makeup was always kind of low key, like a chore. And especially since I'm personally a vegan, I realized that some of the products I had purchased and I was using and promoting, you know, don't align with those ethical morals and values that I have as somebody who doesn't want to use products that harm other beings. So, I decided to clean out my makeup and this is honestly a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because I thought it was just like oh like you just get rid of your makeup and you donate it or you give it to a friend but it's made me realize that makeup really is kind of ingrained into culture like since girls were young they were getting ready in the mirror they brushed their teeth put on deodorant and put on makeup and my mom was kind of a tomboy so she never really like we never had like makeup bonding time but you know, this is so ingrained in our culture and so ingrained in my identity. I realize that I just keep purchasing things and I fall into this trap of consumerism. And even when I was purchasing all this makeup, I was constantly the person who was trying to find the next trend and fit in with the next trend because I didn't love myself, I didn't value myself, I thought that fitting in or having these goods or monetary items would make me valuable. And I think that's another reason why this is so difficult for me is because these things did take up a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort. I mean, I remember one time I went to the container store. I think I spent probably 650 bucks on containers. Containers, literally to store makeup that I wasn't using, that was past the expiration date, that was going bad. And it's like, dude, that money spent on containers alone could have fed a family in Ethiopia or Nepal for an entire year, um, which is just ridiculous to me. And I guess I just wanted to talk about this process, A, to make it easier on me, but also B, because I feel like we're all searching for validation somewhere. Even if we say that we don't, we all look for validation at some point. And especially in the beauty community, there is so much consumerism. Someone's promoting a new brand, there is a new brand, a new line coming out, a new product, a new palette every other day. And it's like, especially when we want to be beautiful, we want to be part of that community, we want to feel good about ourselves, and we're told that these are the things that are going to help us do it. How are we supposed to navigate what truly is or isn't bringing us happiness? And I'm also, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, I'm cleaning out all of my cruelty products. I am mightier than thou. Not at all. You know, for most people, I think it makes sense if you have a brand that was tested on animals, finish using it and then go buy a new one. But for me, I realized that these things weren't just not serving me or not making me happy, but they were actually decreasing my quality of happiness when it came to makeup because when I would open a drawer, I would see these things and I would be reminded that they tested on animals. And then even though not all makeup tests on animals, I just had this negative connotation like pain and discomfort when I looked at my makeup drawers because my makeup drawers were full of things that didn't align with my morals and values. And also, you know, because I'm on YouTube, I, I realized that what I say does have an impact on other people and what I promote has an impact on other people. And if I stay true to my own morals and values, why am I going to use products that don't align with those? And if somebody else sees me using them, they might not know that I'm going to finish this up and then go buy a cruelty free brand. They just see this and think that this is the best thing to cover acne because I used this in a video that got almost 30 million views, you know, before I even knew what animal testing was. And now a bunch of people are going to go buy those things because it can help cover their acne, but little do they know that I have now found cruelty-free options to cover and even cure my acne that work better. And um, you know, that's, that's hard and it's a growing process and I have to tell myself not to feel guilty about it. But you know, I, I feel like there's just such a trap of consumerism and buying more. And it's like, if you're not happy with what you have right now, how are you supposed to be happy when you acquire more? 
because you say, oh, I'll be happy when I get this palette. I'll be happy when I earn this much at work. I'll be happy when I'm at this weight or when I get this job or when I accomplish this thing. But that's thinking into the future of, I can't be happy now until I have that. Well, guess what? Once you have that thing, there's going to be a new item, a new goal weight, a new fashion trend, a new something that you need to acquire or achieve, and you're never going to be satisfied. And I spent so long just chasing trend after trend after trend, searching for beauty, searching for validation. And that's a really hard lesson for me to be learning. And if you look at some of these things, this is probably seven or eight years old. Some of this packaging, they don't even make anymore. Look at this. Benefit doesn't even make things that look like this anymore. And it's cool. It's like a blast from the past, but it's just like, look at all of this consumerism. And I mean, yeah, it's kind of fun to a certain extent to look back on, but when I think about it, these things aren't making me happy. And like I said, they are decreasing my joy of makeup overall. And if they don't align with my morals and values, and I obviously have enough cruelty-free stuff that can sustain me for years to come, why am I still holding on to these things as if it's a piece of an identity or a piece of what makes me Cassandra? You know, when it's just kind of bringing me down. And yes, I'm a beauty guru and I identify with that, but just because I'm a beauty guru doesn't mean that I have to identify as a collector. Even though I'm a beauty guru, I mean, I talk more about skincare and self-love and motivation and even diet and fitness um, and acne than I really do smoky eye tutorial. And don't get me wrong, we all love ourselves a good Desi Perkins smoky eye tutorial and, you know, some Nikki tutorials beat face. But I just don't think that that's me. And so why am I hoarding all of this? These MAC eyeshadows, for the longest time when I was in aesthetic school, I would work and every single paycheck I would spend on MAC. And it's just like, all of these, like, yes, some I've hit pan, but half of these are like barely or slightly used. Troves of lipstick and lip gloss. And fun fact, when I first started my YouTube channel, I actually started it under a different name. My name on the internet was actually Cassandra Cream Sheen. And I named myself after cream sheens and dazzle glasses. And I ended up deleting that channel because I felt so insecure. But that just shows like, how ingrained makeup and consumerism was in my identity here on YouTube. And when you look at this, this stuff is so old. Obviously, even if I wanted to use and enjoy it, it's like not even healthy. It's like coming apart. And when you think about it, a lot of people go around loving things. They say, oh my God, I love this purse, or I love this restaurant, or I love makeup, or I love this backpack. Think about it. Is it actually the restaurant that you love? Or is it the flavor of the food? Is it the community and the laughter and the environment? When you say, oh my God, I love this backpack or this purse. Is it actually the backpack or the purse? Or is it the functionality of it that you love? The fact that it lets you carry certain things. The fact that you, know, you do certain things using that item that make you happy. It contains a, it's like a porthole for adventure. You know, when you say, oh my God, I love my blanket. Do you actually love the blanket or do you love the warmth that you and the blanket create together or the pattern on the blanket that makes you feel calm? And it made me start thinking, when I say I love makeup, do you actually love makeup, the physical item? Or do you love the confidence that it allows you to exude? Or do you love the creativity that it allows you to express? Do you actually love the item? Or do you love what you and the item co-create? And as I got to thinking that, I was like, you know, I'm so attached to items, to things, to shoes, to purses, to jewelry, to makeup. It's actually the experiences that I have in those things or my favorite blanket. It's actually the warmth and the comfort that I co-create with the blanket that I'm so in love with. And you know, that's kind of weird and it sounds really hippie-ish, but then again, I'm wearing elephant pants, so why not? <laughs> and it sounds kind of crazy, but it is very, very accurate. And then when I've come to the point of realizing like, holy crap, 
This isn't just like drugstore makeup. These things cost me $17 a piece. And when I realized that my MAC eyeshadows alone could feed a child in Nepal or in Ethiopia or in Nigeria for an entire year, like that's just ridiculous. And guess what? It's not just MAC eyeshadows. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going and going. And there's just so much more. And when is enough enough? Obviously, the point of this isn't for me to feel guilty. It's a point of waking up, realizing something so that I can grow and change and better myself. Um, but of course that journey is hard and I feel like maybe for me it's harder than most people because I do have deep-rooted problems with identity and beauty from having acne, from being bullied, from the modeling industry, which I was in denial for for so many years. Um, but it's just come to that point of like, it's time to get woke. I'm going to be donating them. There's Dress for Success, which is local. There's SAVE, which is Safe Alternatives to Violent Environments. Um, there's, which is a woman's shelter. There's um, a woman's shelter in San Francisco, Futures Without Violence. Um, there's a girl's shelter in Martinez. And my plan, you know, they would be so grateful to get Givenchy makeup powder that's literally never been used, but it's seven years old. And I mean, is it healthy? have to kind of explore that on a product by product basis, but these things could make somebody else so much happier. And yes, I'm still going to use my Too Faced and I'm still going to love my Lorac and my Tarte Cosmetics and my Smashbox because those are cruelty free and those make me happy. But when I look in my makeup drawer and I'm cluttered with this that I see that makes me feel guilty, it takes away from my experience with makeup. And again, I'm holding on to it because I say, this costs money. This has value. And as a society, we put so much emphasis on that. But it no longer serves me. It no longer takes care of me. So it's, it's okay to let go. And I think you should ask yourself that. Whether it's an item or a person or a gift, are you holding on to something because of guilt or because of obligation? And if you are, you have to realize that that person who gave you that gift or that item isn't meant to be in your life to make you feel negative. It's meant to teach you a lesson. It's like that whole um, magic of decluttering book idea. But it's okay to let those things go. And it's okay to say goodbye to them. You're not indebted to hold on to those things. And that's a lesson that I've been trying to teach myself. And so, of course, I urge you to look into the products you're using, who it's benefiting or hurting. And I'm always a proponent for cruelty-free. But at the same time, I'm not sitting here saying that you need to go out and get rid of all your stuff like I am. I'm just saying that this is my experience and because I'm in the public eye and because it actually decreases my happiness, this is a step that I'm taking. And because you're part of my YouTube family, I wanted to share that with you. So I hope that you guys are having a beautiful day. If you wanna see you know, some of the smiles on people's faces, maybe I'll ask them when I do some donations and post it on Instagram stories or do a Facebook Live. I know that sometimes girls at the homeless shelter don't always wanna talk or be on camera. I've asked before. You know, it's because they're in unfortunate situations that maybe they don't want to publicize that. And some people are just shy on camera. And especially for like the woman's shelter, you can't film in there because that would be exposing women and children who are in hiding or trying to get safe from someone who might be looking for them. So if you do want donation videos on how you can give back or the places that I'm giving back and why, um, maybe we'll do that on Instagram or Facebook or something. But I wanted to thank you for being a part of this process with me and for going through it with me. And even if you know it or not, for providing the support that I really need and the drive to change and the drive to better myself. Um, mm, excuse me, because burping mango, oh, that was a tasty burp. <laughs> um, but you're a really, really huge part of that. And I, I wouldn't be at this place or at this elevated place without you. So I want you to remember that beauty is not something that we're given. It's something that we earn and it's something that we learn. And my goal is always to help you live beautifully inside and out. So remember that you are B-E-A, beautiful, and you are what puts the you in beauty. And um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Love you guys. Bye.